Hi, I'm Dr. Pat Abbott. I am a geologist. For more than 50 years, I have studied the rocks and mountains of the Earth. Mission Trails Regional Park here is a spectacular place to learn about the geological history of San Diego. As we explore through the park, there are many dramatic sites where we can observe and learn about the geology of this area. Please join me and let's take an exploration through the park through 126 million years worth of geologic time. The rocks we see at Mission Trails today give us an understanding of the many different landscapes of the past. At one time, this place was full of violent and explosive volcanoes standing miles high. The mountains we see today were built of hot magma that formed under the surface, then rose upward, cooling into hard rock, igneous rock. Adjacent to Mission Trails is a quarry where we can clearly see the evidence of these volcanoes. These volcanic rock layers we see over here are the oldest rocks we find in Mission Trails Park. These are the Santiago Peak Volcanics. Each of these volcanic layers we see is debris that fell down from the sky from a violent explosive eruption. The volcanoes that erupted them are long gone. They've been destroyed by erosion but we still see their product, the material that was blown into the air and settled out as layers. We look over here at the wall and we can see layer after layer. Each one of those layers you see over there represents a violent explosive eruption. Had we been here at that time, we would have been killed. Where did these volcanoes come from? The outer crust of the Earth is not static. It is made up of enormous, slow-moving plates called tectonic plates. The energy that created the hot volcanic magma came from the heavier plate of the Pacific Ocean floor, moving under the North American continental plate. This process is called subduction, and because the plate runs into high temperatures deep inside the Earth, the rock plate is heated and melts into liquid, into magma. Igneous rocks are cooled magma, and we have two main categories of cooled magma. The magma starts tens of miles below the surface of the Earth. If it runs all the way up to the surface and erupts and flows out on the ground surface, we call those volcanic rocks but most of the magma never makes it to the surface. It rises up, and here it stopped maybe a mile below the ground surface, slowly cooled and grew into what we call plutonic igneous rocks, named after the Roman god of the underworld, Pluto. We have over here a bank cut by the San Diego River, and it beautifully exposes two different rock bodies. They've been brought together next to each other by a geologic fault. If we look carefully at the boundary between them, if we look over here, we see on the left, the orangish tinged volcanic rocks, the 126 million year old ones. If we move farther over to the right, we'll run into a bundle of fractures, almost looking like a mega deck of playing cards. That's a geologic fault. And that separates the volcanic rocks from the plutonic rocks over here, the gray massive rocks. So if magma becomes plutonic rock miles below the Earth's surface, how can there be mountains of plutonic rock at Mission Trails? To answer this, we have to look at the tectonic plates again. About 90 million years ago, the oceanic plate started being pulled under current-day California at shallower angles. The creation of hot magma moved eastward, underneath current-day Arizona and northern Mexico. After the production of magma stopped beneath San Diego, another process started to dominate, erosion. Erosion, doing its work through the pull of gravity, rainfall, and river flow, lowered the volcanic mountaintops. And at the same time, the plutonic rock mass beneath rose. To understand this, you have to think of the Earth not as a solid, 
but as being made of floating layers all the way from its core. It is much like a boat on water. As weight is removed, the boat floats upward, just like the plutonic rock mass beneath the ancient surface. The loss of weight of the volcanic mountains above is counterbalanced by a rise of plutonic rock from deep below. It is a process called isostasy. San Diego has several mountain ranges of plutonic rock, the five peaks of Mission Trails are good examples of this remarkable ongoing transformation. We're here with a great view of the main mountain masses in Mission Trails Park. These are all plutonic rocks miles across. If we look over here all the way onto the skyline, North Fortuna Mountain, look at that very resistant ridge of rock sticking out against the skyline. Visualize that as the base of a big, huge blob of magma more than a mile deep below the surface. If we can follow that from North Fortuna Mountain across the saddle, and look over here on South Fortuna Mountain. See how steep that cliff is, that rock face is right there? There's that same resistant rock mass, same piece of igneous rock coming on across over to Kwaipai, the highly fractured rock. But look at that same steep resistant face. It goes all the way over onto the skyline there with Coles Mountain. That's magma that cooled over a mile deep. We're looking at one, if you would, individual blob of magma that came up like a giant blob within a lava lamp, miles across. What is happening is a never-ending rock cycle on a grandiose scale. It is a battle between the Earth's internally powered construction of land and the Sun's externally powered destruction of land. There are many places in the park where you can see traces of this rock cycle. Well, when we look up at that steep face on Kwaipai, you see the rock climbers climbing that steep face. But one of the things that's striking are the deep fractures cutting into the mountain there. That's isolating rock blocks, weakening them, making it easier for gravity to pull on them. Can you visualize one of those blocks under the pull of gravity, falling, bouncing its way downhill? And lo and behold, here's one right before us. Here's one of those rocks that's fallen down. Let's go over and have a look at it. When we look at this rock, we see a lot of mineral crystals, even the sun reflecting off of some of the mineral surfaces. It's fairly large mineral crystals. For mineral crystals to grow large, they have to cool slowly. And the way things cool slowly means deep below the surface. These large crystals here suggest that this was liquid rock, magma, that cooled at a depth of about one mile below the surface. We can also see another aspect of its history here with these dark spot. Here are these dark blotches. We call these xenoliths, they're foreign rocks. These are pieces of rock as the magma was pushing its way upward, it broke off pieces of overlying rock which fell into the magma and were partially assimilated. And what's more, this particular rock is the block we saw up a high on Kwaipai. This is a rock of gravity pulled down bouncing its way downhill and ending up next to us here on the road. Over time, rocks are broken down and altered by weathering as well as erosion. Sunlight expands and fractures rocks, and acids in river water and rain eat away at rock surfaces. Roots from trees and plants wedge into and break apart rock masses. Weathering decays and breaks down rocks into tinier and tinier pieces. When rocks turn into gravel, sand, and clay, they can become elements of soil, like the soil we use for growing plants. Some soils have been buried, preserved, and exposed again. We call such soil paleosols, or ancient soil and you can go hunting for these ancient soils in the park. Walking up Junipero Cerro Trail, we find some very interesting things like, like over here. We come over here and look what we find here. We see a large boulder, a boulder over two feet in diameter. This rounded big boulder here, this is the same kind of boulder we've been looking at on the hills, the big rounded hard rocks of plutonic rock. 
Here though, after thousands of years of weathering, acid and rainwater, plant acids, they've decomposed that hard rock, but now it just looks like, like slicing an onion in the kitchen. You see all these concentric layers. It's thoroughly rotten plutonic rock. They're sand grains now, waiting for a heavy rain. With a heavy rain, these grains will wash down into the river, the river will carry them to the beach, and this is going to be the next generation of beach sand. About 56 to 34 million years ago, a new rock mass developed. When the creation of magma and volcanoes moved eastward, rivers moved eastward as well. So rivers running to the Pacific Ocean became fewer, and they grew very large and long. One of those ancient huge rivers is called the Bayena River. It began in current-day northern Mexico and flowed 225 miles west before reaching San Diego, bringing reddish volcanic gravel to the coast. Upon reaching the coastal plain, the river water spread outward, dumping its sediment in a fan shape, creating an alluvial fan. This ancient alluvial fan was huge. There was no Mount Soledad, no Point Loma, and no national city. Most of the San Diego area we know today, from Oceanside to Chula Vista, was covered in a featureless cone-shaped mass. We're here at the visitor center looking at this model of the alluvial fan, this massive cone of gravel and sand. That buried all the topography we're used to having around here. In fact, if we were here 40 million years ago, the only thing we would recognize would be here, the tip of the tallest peak, Coles Mountain. Coles Mountain over here, barely the top of it we would see, everything else buried. In fact, if we were standing here on the visitor center terrace 40 million years ago, we would have several hundred feet of gravel and sand above us. We would be buried deep below the surface. Today, a popular destination within Mission Trails Regional Park is Lake Murray, a reservoir. Most people might be surprised to know that this area is a rock body remnant made from eroded alluvial fan. Walking around Lake Murray, you find very interesting things. Here is an exotic rock. This particular rock here is found nowhere in the state of California. This is a rock that's been brought here from what today is modern day Mexico, brought some 200 miles through a river system deposited here where we find it at Lake Murray today. It's exposed within the alluvial fan. It's within the conglomerate. The conglomerate, when we look at it very carefully, the conglomerate is a rock made of many kinds of rocks. Here are pebbles of local volcanic rocks. Here's a boulder decomposing a plutonic rock. Uh, here's sand cemented together. And we find it now around Lake Murray as remnants of the ancient alluvial fan. The Bayena River flows no more. About 33 million years ago, the river changed its course, and the building of the alluvial fan stopped. Once again, erosion dominated, stripping away much of the sedimentary rock from the alluvial fan, and began the reshaping of the land that continues today. Most of the volcanic and plutonic rock mountains of the past are now re-exposed. Erosion has given us back our mountains to see again. Today at Mission Trails, we enjoy many unusual and exceptional geological formations of rock thanks to the work of erosion. People have given popular names to some of the geological creations, including Snakehead Rock on Father Junipero Serra Trail, and are intrigued by the rocks split apart by growing tree roots on Grinding Rocks Trail. One of the most dramatic geological wonders at Mission Trails has triggered a whole range of puzzling questions. It is known as the mystery of the rounded mega boulders. There's something very interesting here to look at. Look up here and see these huge rounded boulders. 
Those huge rounded boulders are so exciting, they get people's imaginations going. They see that rounded and they think, wow, those huge boulders were moved. Must have been powerful water that moved them. Well, they do have an interesting history, but it's a little bit more tame than that. Uh, and let's use this as an example. The rocks of the mountain, when we look at them, they're actually fractured in different directions. Here's a fractured direction going this way, fractured direction going this way, and one this way. So what happens is below the ground surface, water coming down through these cracks will eat away at this surface here, it'll eat away at this surface here, that surface here. As it eats away at all the corners, that rectangular block of rock ends up being our rounded mega boulder. Here it is, our plutonic boulder, rounded without ever having moved anywhere at all. Today, we enjoy the park's historic old mission dam, built over 200 years ago. But the history of this place goes back much further. Millions of years ago, a huge river, the Bayena River, brought rocks here from hundreds of miles away. Today, the San Diego River cuts through Mission Trails Regional Park, not in a straight line to the ocean, but twisting and turning and carving its way between Mission Trails plutonic and volcanic rock mountains. Once buried in the ancient alluvial fan, Kwai Pai is a gift from the depths, now cherished by rock climbers. and hikers walk around ancient rocks, such as the captivating snakehead rock and the mysterious rounded mega boulders, changed by weathering over time. These are the geological gems of a little Yosemite Valley, right here in San Diego. We call this place Mission Gorge. People come to Mission Trails to be outdoors and to enjoy the natural environment. But looking closely, you can see something of the complex geologic history, the rise and fall of mountains, the building of topography, the destruction of topography. Rocks form and transform in a never-ending cycle. This cycle goes on for millions of years. The history is here for all of us to see. Please look for it as you explore the park. <laughs>